Welcome to the 17th community engagement session held by the Geskos Project, the project formerly known as the International Estonian Centre. My name is Ellen Walter. I am the project lead for Geskos. Tänä õhtun esitlus toimub inglise keeles, kuna liitujaid on nii ümbritsevast ääneks rajoonist kui ka meie oma kogukonnast ning aja kokku hoidmise tõttu ei hakka korduvat tõlget tekitama. So tonight will be in English. So let us get underway. Tomorrow is the commemoration of the March 25th deportations. And we hang our heads in sadness for the horrors of that night in Estonia in 1949 and for all of the ensuing trauma. The perpetrators of those horrors is the same aggressor that is in our daily news, barbarically attacking the freedom loving people of Ukraine. One of our prior blog posts is about how Gesku stands with Ukraine, but there's more. And so I would ask that Gesku's development manager, David Gollum, advise how Gesku is addressing sanctions and other restrictions. Thanks, Ellen. Uh, Gesku has undertaken a thorough review of all suppliers of equipment, material, and know-how to make sure that not a single component is sourced from either Russia or Belarus. We have completed that review and are confident that, we're, that there will be no contribution from either of those countries in Gascos. Thank you, David. Gascos came to life through the cooperation of four organizations, the Estonian House in Toronto Limited, and the three that you see on the screen. And this cooperation has continued to attract more and more support. So Estonians in Vancouver, Montreal, New York, Florida, Chicago, Ottawa, San Francisco, Estonia, have invited Geskos to talk about the project with their communities. And the local Annex Residents Association has expressed its unconditional support for the Geskos project. Donors from around the world have shown their support for Geskus with financial donations. The government of Estonia has called Geskus Estonians project of the century. Just two days ago, the Geskus project presented a video game called Miss Geskus to Estonian language teachers around the world via Eesti Institute. The video's gameplay is located in the finished Geskus and a number of achievements and challenges have been constructed to help players navigate within Geskus, but moreover, will help young and old with learning basic Estonian words. We'll be rolling this out soon, so do sign up for the monthly newsletter so you too will know as soon as it's available. Geskus is helping reinforce our global Estonian community and network and will continue to strive to do so as we build the physical building. Haley Dome is the board chair for International Estonian Centre Inc, the entity responsible for build, building Gesco. So over to you, Haley. Thank you, Ellen. Um, this project started off as a 25,000 square foot building and Geskos is now an almost 36,000 square foot center with far more usable space than the current Estonian house. But increased square footage is not the only cost pressure. This last year has seen many challenges, including delays and cost increases affecting the entire construction industry in both labor and materials. By way of example, Geskus will contain about 450 tons of steel. Plate steel prices are up 30%, while HFS steel beam prices are up 50%. Another example is lumber. After the spike of lumber prices settled, they still hover up at about 280% above pre-COVID levels. Geskus did lock in several significant costs before price hikes, but not all. So we still face the reality of cost escalation. So what have we done to effectively manage these challenges? We can break it down into three parts. First, a huge effort was undertaken in a value engineering exercise to find cost savings. The IECI board, together with Alar Kongas, architect, 
Bill Waters, construction manager, and our pro project manager, David, worked on the design to squeeze the budget as much as possible. Second, we defined what elements of the building could be deferred or substituted given new budgetary constraints while making sure that the signature look and quality of the building is still maintained. After this effort, the construction portion of the overall budget is still left us with a 40% increase from the original 20 million, taking us to a $27 million budget for the build portion. So then what? Third, Estonian Art Center looked at how it could help with the capital campaign to meet these challenges. I now turn this over to Lisa Garit, board chair of Estonian Art Center, the charity associated with Geskos, to speak to the tremendous efforts and the generous donors that helped secure, secure Geskos' future. Over to you, Lisa. You're on mute, Lisa. How about if I start again? Thank you, Haley. firstly. Given this challenge, the Capital Campaign Committee connected with each leadership donor at the Galevi Boy Allowed level. As a reminder, Galevi Boy Allowed is the donation level of $100,000 and above. Viru Wanemat are those who have donated from 10,000 to 100,000. And Kungla Rafas are those who have donated up to a level of $10,000. Well, the Kalevi Pauyalau donors rallied in response, setting an example for us all. Leadership donors doubled and tripled their donations to ensure that construction of Geskus could responsibly begin. A huge thank you to every one of these leadership donors. In the aggregate, the new funds secured come close to matching and offsetting the $7 million of COVID cost pressures giving the confidence required to proceed with Alar Gongatz's high quality design. As important as leadership gifts are, Geskus is all about community, our community. And we cannot underscore enough the importance of everyone's participation. An example of this was last year's Tere Geskus campaign, where people from around the world donated, from small children giving coins from their piggy banks, all the way up to the Kalevi Boy Allowed. Every gift makes a difference as we build this vision together. And the capital campaign is in no way over. So if you have not yet donated, or if you wish to contribute more, please do go to the Geskos website, call the donations line, or speak with any one of us. Thank you. And now I turn it over to David to review where we are with construction and how we'll proceed. Thanks, Lisa. I am pleased to inform everyone that the construction began on Geskus, on the Geskus project a few weeks back. The construction plan for the project lays out 15 phases of pre-construction and a further 40 plus phases of construction itself. I will simplify the construction phases into three main phases. These are phase one, down to the tunnels, phase two, upward to watertight, and phase three, internal and external finishes, and then occupancy. So phase one, downward to the tunnels, uh, is really shoring deep foundations and excavation. This phase will last from present to mid-2022. It is a phase that will appear to go slowly as most of the technical work is actually completed below grade prior to the excavation beginning. Excavation will be the most noticeable part of this phase. Activities like site clearing of unwanted structures and vegetation has been first. The house has been made safe, selectively demolished and stabilized in preparation for the restoration work slated to be completed on the house in phase two. Later, we will play a, vid a short video clip of this activity actually underway. Now we are starting, uh, right now we are starting with two types of deep foundations that will be installed on both sides of the TTC infrastructure. This is a major untake undertaking involving the coordination of very large equipment on a tight site. Next, this equipment will be used to install the shoring piles. Shoring structure forms retaining walls below grade 
that in turn allows the excavation to extend right to the property lines without overdig. The final step will be to excavate the site down to the foundation elevation, which will expose the top surfaces of the TTC tunnels. Phase two, upward to watertight, is really just vertical construction. As this phase marks the beginning of upward construction, it will start with the waterproofing of the top surface of the TTC tunnels in early, uh, sorry, early in Q2 of 2023 and end with a watertight building, so excuse me, watertight the top surface of the TTC, TTC tunnel and end early in Q2 of 2023 with a watertight building. The extent of the remediation work required to refurbish the top surface of the TTC tunnels prior to waterproofing is currently unknown and does represent some schedule risk for the project. Next will be the concrete work on the grade beams, foundation walls, and transfer slab. This will give way to the structural steel trade that will erect the superstructure and floor decks. Mechanical and electrical trades will then focus on the interior of the building. The final step of this phase will be to hang the signature exterior glazing and to install the roofing system. Phase three, the internal and external finishes and occupancy. Um, now that the building is watertight, interior work will begin, starting with perimeter studs, insulation, thermal and moisture protection, sealants and fire stopping. Later comes the partition walls, mechanical and electrical rough-in and drywall. Tenant improvements are completed in this phase concurrently with the rest of the interior and exterior finishes. Guest Goose is targeted for completion in late 2023. I will now pass it back to Ellen. Thank you, David. So the last two weeks of footage is both from the construction camera on the roof of Tartu College, as well as some street level. Thank you goes to Tarmo, Sean and Davi for making the uh, uh, construction cam from above happen. So I'm gonna play uh, two time lapses and in the center will be some street level footage. And just as a warning in the first time lapse, keep your eye on the rear of the heritage house at the top of your screen because it comes down suddenly in a hurry. <laughs> and in the second time lapse, keep your eye on the front of the heritage house. So here we go. So we will post more construction camera footage from time to time on the GESCO's website. As David noted, there will be times when uh, a lot of the work is happening underground, so we won't keep posting uh, weeks if there's nothing much to see, uh, but do 
keep your eye on the uh, guest school's blog and on your newsletters. So now over to Veiko Parming, president of Estonian House in Toronto Limited, to discuss what the facilities at the Broadview location will hold for the next little while. Thank you, Ellen. Um, I'll provide an update on uh, ASD Maya and on the leaseback. And uh, David has been in extended discussions with Diamond Kilmer, which is the new owner of the property, about an extension to the leaseback uh, to ASD Maya, which, as you might uh, know or remember, was set to expire in May. And on this point, I have some uh, mixed news to report. At this point, Diamond Kilmer has agreed to an extension to the end of October. Um, moving to a rolling two month notice after that. And really the new owner is being conservative right now because they want to be able to have the site uh, for development as soon as they are ready to build. So indications right now continue to be uh, that they will go to the OMB or LPAT and uh, will have quite a bit more work to do on their side before they can start building. And that will uh, be most likely well into 2023. Uh, however, uh, we have to go with the information that we have, which uh, is that as of right now, we are extended uh, to the fall. So I understand that, uh, of course, uncertainty is a challenge for everyone, for uh, tenants and for the community groups that use ASDMIA. And we're going to try to take it a step at a time and to keep pushing out the date. Um, ideally, perhaps get to spring 2023 and then Geskos opens in the fall of 2023. Um, it's certainly possible that Diamond Kilmer will not need the site until fall 2023. So it's entirely possible that the dates will line up. But of course, uh, the further out uh, we look, the dates do become less certain. So on Estimaya's side, we're also going to be closely tracking our financial position. We're hoping not to dip into the red too much, uh, but you know there might be some, some challenges for us. And uh, obviously every group or organization is going to have different needs to be more or less flexible and so forth. So what we would like to do is to have a discussion with each group in the next while to understand the specific needs um, for the transition period, different options can be explored if the single move turns out uh, not to be viable. I'd, I'd also like to acknowledge that um, we were originally hoping to have uh, advanced to a stage of planning for GESCO's uh, move-in discussions to talk about usage costs and uh, amount of available storage space and so on. That, that was the hope. Um, there's been such an immense amount of work on GESCO's that we simply have not gone to this point yet. So uh, my apologies, there's no change in terms of our strong desire to and intent to provide plentiful space at affordable rates at Geskos to our community. That's still the guiding objective really of the project. It's just the question of pushing through the next few stages um, before that work stream can really start in earnest. I'm, I'm happy to say that we're close to confirming uh, the volunteers that will help with this work stream, and then uh, we will uh, start to getting this underway. Uh, but as I said, GESC was working uh, for the community first. That remains at the very heart of why GESC is being built. So with that, in the meantime, the, this extension uh, of the use of ASD Maya through to the end of October does provide some more certainty and uh, in terms of planning activities at ASTMIA until then, uh, as we emerge from COVID. Some activities have already returned uh, to ASTMIA, which is wonderful to see. We're starting to rent out the halls again. We've done some repairs around ASTMIA that were well needed. And we want to keep ASTMIA open so that it can be enjoyed by the community as we work towards building the new ASTMIA at uh, Kesikos. So back to you, Ellen. As we fix our sights on completion of Geskus, it's now clearly on the horizon. We will mark an official start of construction on Friday, April 8th. Please mark it in your calendars. This is the date of the ceremonial groundbreaking on the Geskus site, and everyone is invited. It will take place at noon. It won't last long because construction will have to be stopped for this time and we do want activity to resume promptly. 
But this is finally the historical moment with this monumental project. Sur Sadiq Thomas Luk will be in attendance as well as Councillor Mike Layton. Please come, bring an Estonian flag, a Canadian flag, and yes, while April showers bring May flowers, we do not plan on a rain date. So barring torrential storms, we will do this on April 8th, rain or shine at noon. Again, please follow the project on social media, the estoniancenter.ca website, where you can sign up for the newsletter and get all of the news to your inbox. I would like to close with a very enthusiastic endorsement. Uh, and after I play this next clip, uh, we'll close out the meeting. Thank you very much. Suur tänu tulemast ja huvi tundmast ja kuulemast. The groundbreaking will be at noon on the 8th, so please mark that in your calendar. Uh, and uh, thank you very much. And to the panelists as well, and to Erik for hosting. Mm -hmm. Hello, bonjour, Tere. My name is Kevin Rex, and I have the great privilege of serving as Canada's ambassador here in beautiful Tallinn, Estonia. You know, I've just seen the new design for the International Estonian Centre, and it is gorgeous. I grew up in Toronto, and I know the exact location of the Nukesko Centre, right in the heart of the world's most multicultural city. Canada and Estonia have grown so close over these past 100 years, and this building really pays tribute to that relationship. In fact, when it's completed, the very map of the country of Estonia will be there in the city of Toronto. My congratulations to all of the organizers on this incredible task and their wonderful journey. I can't wait for the grand opening party. I sure hope I'm invited. Elago Esti, Elago Canada, Elago Keskus. Thank you. Merci. Aitlan.